This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. For more great podcasts, head over to BigHeadsMedia.com. This week on a new TV Tuners, Stairmaster goes to the beach. Oh no! My limbs! My skin! I'm getting old! And Keorain tries out for the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, um, here I am. Uh, I'm gonna show my skills here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw the ball. Da 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 da. All that and more on a new TV tuner. TV Tuners. It's a television podcast for the true fanatics. It's a weekly dive in the latest in TV news and reviews. I'm your host, Swanson. With me, as always, is my co-host and uh, the guy who's constantly looking at his junk, Stairmaster. It doesn't make a bit of difference. The balls are inert. <laughs> yeah? Is the... Go hot. They don't work anymore. Are you are you worried? <laughs> yes. Oh, all right. Uh, and with us as always, of course, is our other co-host and uh, manager of a resort who's trying to keep it all together. Keo Rain. I wish I could do an Australian accent, but I would just embarrass myself here. Razor blades. So I'm just gonna. That's how you get into the accent by saying razor blades. That's not going to help me. Rise of blades. Rise of blades. Good day, mate. That's not even. That's not even close. Fancy some pe- Fancy a pint. <laughs> a that pint? Uh, you think that's that's an Australian word? Want some piss water? Derry, like you're you're upsetting me. I'm getting really like, I'm actually offended <laughs> right now. Kia's offended on behalf of the Australian people. Yeah, the, like I feel a strong kid, kinship with the Australian people. You're both criminals. Yeah, yeah, and you both committed genocide. Yeah, and also both of you have gone scarily right wing in the past couple in the past decade. Yeah, well, Garden is a very incorrect word for Australia. <laughs> Remember the whole genocide thing. Uh, true. What, what, uh, which, like, place didn't do a genocide? Uh. We'll wait. Yeah, checkmate. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's as if, uh, no, co- no developed right. country Gen- is to blame, is blameless. Yet another reason the, the, the Yankees have won again. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so we're on the TV Move tuners on. for another week of. Uh, great television content, just nothing but TV talk here on the show. And, hey, listen, if you like what you're hearing, and while the discussions are going on, you have some sort of quip, comment, question, foresight, otherwise, well, any of those could be sent to us at our email address and read aloud on the podcast. Well, yeah, that's true. Send those over to our email address, tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. What's that email, Kiora? Who would do that? It's a tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com, but I don't know who would do that. That's crazy talk. Well, yeah, you send one in and we read it aloud, and you could be like Geo, who sent us this <gasps> email Panama Red. Boys, Uh-oh. quit the chit chat. We have business to deal with. Oh. oh okay. Just. I just got off the phone with Charles Cushworth over at Danksbury Farms, <laughs> and he's open to the idea of doing a promotional TV tuner's tie-in strain, assuming you fellas can think up a good name uh... for it. So, what will it be? Stairmaster Cush? Granddaddy Keo? Swanson Selects? All right, you fellas get back to me on that. I'm following a lead on a new energy drink coming out of northern Canada. 
I got him thinking Kia was an American superhero. A lot of money in those cans, <laughs> boys. <laughs> Business Geo. <Gio. laughs> it's, it's like it's like Geo. Like is he like our manager? He's now? our personal brand manager. Yeah, Gio. we we need a yeah we have a brand. It's just that we're not utilizing it to the proper extent that we need to. And Gio's gonna help with that. We have, we have friends like him. Gio wearing a suit? Is yes. that what's going well, on? Well, business Gio, so of course he's got a suit and tie on. And he threw his punk records in the trash. Yeah. He's not, like, it, Gio, if he wasn't wearing a suit and tie, he'd be business casual Gio. Wait, let, let me ask you this. Is, is Gio, like, currently in a high-rise building? Yes. Staring out the window with his hands behind yes. his back? Hell's Kitchen together? will be his. Yes. <laughs> uh, sorry, Stair, I think you mean Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> I am the savior. As for weed names, I don't really know like the name of any weed, so I wouldn't really know what kind of na- naming pattern. Are like BioJesus, Chernobyl. Yeah. They're like they're like toxin names. Uh What are they called? The nerve gas Tropic and Gundam? Could we just make that the name <laughs> of our weed? I think it's G2 or something. Yeah. We, we should name it. I was thinking a strain named Quattro Bugina. Yeah, that's good. That'd be good. What if we just named our our weed uh, Hayaku Shiki? <laughs> oh, man. Yes, that is the best weed name. That 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 is pretty good. All right. Well, <laughs> easy enough. Uh, I mean, if we want to go for more, uh, you know, live action oh, TV yeah, maybe- deal there we could do like um some pulp <laughs> okay or maybe satriales yeah we could do like um bought a bush bought a kush oh <laughs> and we're, we're, is, is bush actually a weed term i don't know oh we could name it pie oh hi yes kush is a weed term I said you, I thought you said Bush. Yeah, I did say Bush, and I was wrong. Is there has okay. someone done a weed strain yet called George W. Kush? Probably, definitely. They had to have, right? I mean, it's There's right no there. Way. If you haven't done it yet, I'd be shocked. They probably Why did we George just... H. W. Kush. Yeah. What about like like Weed House could be our Weed House? Oh yeah, that's probably the one that you would need to do, right? Because that is essentially. Uh, thanks to the remix that Gio made all those years ago. Um, anyway, yeah, that we'll, we'll go with Weed House. If it, uh, we'll, if if not Weed House, then definitely Hayaku Shiki. I'm glad we chose a name that has nothing to do with us. Well, Weed House does. Uh, it was a joke we made on the pod. Uh, all right, true. <laughs> Correct. That's actually the most TV tuners thing. Instead of naming it after something from Gundam. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm reading about George W. Cush. Oh, is it a thing? Is it Confirmed. Good? Yes. George W. Cush is a discontinued, mostly indica variety discontinued. of seeds and can be cultivated indoors. The plants will need a flowering time of plus or minus sixty days and outdoors. George W. Cush. Yeah. But is it good? Is it good stuff? Is uh, it that kind? Of, is it is it good stuff? Seventy percent indica yield is high. THC level is high. I guess that's good. All right. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we'll go with Weed House Geo. Uh, when when you want to get back to Danksbury Farms. Uh, thanks for that email. <laughs> <laughs> That was delightful, Geo. Thank you for the email, my friend. Uh, if if you want to be like Geo, of course, that email address, tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, and hey, that emails aren't the only way you can t- talk to us. We're, of course, on Twitter. What? We're, we're, we got tons of great TV content over at, at tvtuners on Twitter. Uh, what we mainly, we have a bunch of interns who are just cranking out great TV content. But what they mainly use that Twitter page for is each week. They scour the Twitter space, looking for the tweet of the week. And Stairmaster, I heard they got one for us this week. Yes. This tweet of the week comes from J.A. Adonde, who writes, Let's check in on the inaugural Olympic skateboarding competition. (laughs) (laughs) 
Christ. All right. So this is a video that we've watched prior to recording. Hey, whoa, hey. Whoa. I'm sorry. And and Keo Keo did not like this. I loved it. Keo was not a fan. So this is a skateboarder. Right, just... uh, is this from the American team? I don't know. All I know is he's not having a good time. No, he uh, oh he hits the ha- he hits the half pipe with and his then he ha- hits his own half pipe. Yeah, he hits his he, he hits his balls on the one of the rails. <laughs> that's not actually the tweet of the week. I just said that to make Keo mad. I am mad. Good. I just 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 for the record, I don't approve of laughing at this. It's not funny. <laughs> and then they had to like spray his balls down. And I don't appreciate that you're making me like Mr. Buzz Killington here <laughs> on the podcast. Listen, it's just it, it goes to show you <laughs> it's the Star- Olympics. Listan, it goes to show you Stairmaster and I definitely grew up in a household that watched America's funniest home videos and, and Keo did not. Yeah. So it so it's funnier because the person is trying to compete seriously. Yeah, it's and... supposed to be like dignified <laughs> and a guy sm- he's skateboarding and smashing his nards. That's like the most <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Listen, like I think de-mystif- I think there's something ho- I think there's something intentionally funny for when in real life something happens that should only belong in cartoons and Adam Sandler movies. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a real thing that happened to a person. Yeah, like and imagine. Like, oh. Okay, would it be funny if the guy carrying the torch fell and smashed his balls on a rail? Uh, only if he wasn't a real man. <laughs> like, okay, not, not not like a like a fictional character and something that doesn't exist. Not actually laughing at a person who actually had like <laughs> immense bodily harm done. So to you're him. telling me that like if you saw a video of Joe Biden walking walking up to the Air Force One. And he trips on the last step and hits his nards. Okay, or a football hits someone while he's on the Rose Garden in the he, nards. And it says, go stoink! It would only be funny if he said something funny after. What if he was just like, oh, my nards! <laughs> yeah, I would laugh at that. But So what you needed from an- this clip is, like, is the guy afterwards going, my nards! Yeah, like if he had a sense of humor about it and he was like making humorous comments about it. I'd be laughing pretty but hard. Considering it, but considering they like, had to like hose him down, he probably was not in the mood for laughter. Yeah, he's probably in a lot of pain and uh probably felt really humiliated. Probably had to go to the surgery room. Yeah, it's like real funny guys. <laughs> yeah, he's not gonna be using that no sex bed that the Japanese built. Yeah, that's like the kind of stuff that makes me laugh. <laughs> Alright, so the real tweet of the week is from Ryan Strait, who writes, Between old and the white lotus, resort representation in the media is at an all-time high. <laughs> <laughs> old is that movie about the beach that makes you go old. Okay. So he found there was two products that have, like... Beaches. A beach setting. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, wow, I can't believe like they're actually putting beach representation in the media again. I mean, I don't know why we're gonna. I'm gonna ask a question. The Stairmaster, who also hasn't seen the film Old, because I think it like just came out the day I know of a recording. Rapper named Midsize Sedan in it. Yeah, that sounds like a like that sounds like a rejected JoJo character. So that's interesting. <laughs> um, it, so what's the, your question? His this, oh, by the way, the description for Midsize Sedan is that he's a rapper afflicted with hemophilia. Oh no, he's like. The- He's like Prince Alexander or whatever. Yes. Um, anyway, my question was going to be, uh, is there a resort in, old, in the movie Old? I thought they were just going to the beach and then they'd be like, oh no, now I'm an old person. I... There must be a resort because this person is an expert. He's posting on his account pictures of uh, from the movie and talking about how we watched the movie. Oh, this so guy can't... Be... I think there's like a summer home. Type deal. Oh no! It's yeah, a summer resort home. And then they're just like they're becoming old, and yeah. I'm just, I'm just really glad to see resorts getting the representation they deserve because you know they've been just kind of shafted by the media. Like growing up in this country as a resort, you really need to kind of see it in the media so you can feel like a you know it's true person. Well, I think we need to represent resorts because the tropical wonders of this world are slowly vanishing. Listen, this is a is that, this is a message to Marvel. Make your next superhero a resort. Is that <laughs> how climate change works? The 
tropics are going away? Uh, yes, actually. The well, rising sea level is causing beach sand to disappear, and, you know, the rainforest is probably going to burn down in the next couple of decades. Yeah, the sure, sure, yeah. The beaches are going to go away. Yeah. Hey, listen, guys. No, they've had their. You no, know, haven't you heard about Florida having to import sand from other countries? Uh, no. Hey, listen, this is all important and stuff, but I do have a, a item I want to share about the movie Old. Uh huh. It currently has six. It's currently made six point nine million at the box office. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not a lot, is it? Uh, it's not a lot considering its budget is eighteen million, but it's only been out for a day. Hmm. I don't want to watch it though, so I, I think I I can speak for everybody that it's a bad movie. Well, I think it's safe to say it's probably not a great movie considering it's M Night Shyamalan, and I can't remember the last time I enjoyed a movie of his. What, what did he make? He uh, made, uh, was he known for Sixth it? Sense. Yeah. And Unbreakable, and nothing else. <laughs> yes, no other movies. I thought you made like a like a really big movie. People were like, "Oh, uh, the last Airbender." Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he did do he that. Also, he also made The Happening. Uh, he made that After Earth movie with Will Smith and his son, where they're on like a oh, Scientology planet. Yeah, that's him. Believe it or not, I'm tuning in on this tweet because resort representation is important. Tune and, in, and we need more of it. And I'm talking about good resort representation. I want to feel like I really know the character of this resort. I really need to like. It needs to not be a stereotype for one thing. Yeah, like I can't. I, we don't want a tor- a token resort showing up. <laughs> Yeah, we we can't just like say it's a resort. We have to actually understand that it is in fact a real resort. That no, we like need real... to sh- see the resort being built. Yes. Yeah. And we need to get a good look at like the resorts like drink menu as well. Also, can we <laughs> yeah. please have more resort shows and movies made by resorts? <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way we're truly going to get good representation of resorts. Yeah, I I just want like, just give me one. See how it goes. You yeah, know? exactly. You'll never know until you try it. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Ryan. Uh, Ryan Straight Street. You... Ryan Dunn. Okay, sure. Thanks for that tweet, buddy. Uh, that congratulations on the tune in there. Uh, all right. Well, let's get to the rabble then, huh? Yes, everyone's favorite segment. That's right. The Rabble is a segment here on the pod where we give you a little sneak peek of the show we're going to be talking about this week, The White Lotus, uh, by giving you some IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes reviews to show you what people uh, elsewhere in the sphere of television talk have to say about the show uh, before you get our official TV tuners take. Uh, So we got some IMDb reviews, we got some critics reviews from Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, Who wants to start us off? Um, I guess I can go first. I've got like a pretty like, you know, just a average IMDb review. I'm not farming for content like Stairmaster is. I'm not going for the, you know, the big wig <laughs> critics out there. I'm just going to be getting the average person's normal review that I strongly, uh, you know, I have feelings with. on. <laughs> All right. This is a nine out of 10. Oh, okay. Um, Titled, I'm Very Confused, Why the Negative Reviews, by Natalia, not going to pronounce that. Um, Did people seriously stop understanding what satire is? I've seen complaints that none of the characters are likable. That's the whole point of this genre, Jesus Christ. The characters are meant to represent some negative traits in their social group. I'm loving the series so far. It's smart, or it's fresh and smart, with the right amount of fringe. Because rich white people are usually cringy as hell, even when they think they aren't. Every arc has my attention. There are no weak points, both in terms of storytelling and acting. I can't wait till the situation starts getting out of hand and we'll get an answer to a murder mystery. Special shout out to people who created a beautiful intro and to Cristobal Tapia de Vere for composing a highly addictive intro song. They're fabulous. 
21 out of 30 found this helpful. Ooh, okay. Oh my god. My, my HBO miniseries has no weaknesses. Zero weak points. <laughs> Uh, your your attacks are shrugged off by this beast. So it's clear. Uh, there's one thing that we can all agree on. This is cringe. There's yes. some excellent. Oh, there's some excellent yeah. cringe in this show. I mean, I don't know if you use the word excellent to describe it, but there is like there is cringe. I would not show. say it's excellent. They do cringe, cringe. and they do it, and it's there. Um, it's potent. We can say also, that. Also, was anyone confused? Of, like, did anyone think that they were perp- not purposely trying to make shitty like characters that are like awful people? <laughs> like, like people, like the writers are trying to make a likable group, and they just couldn't do. Yeah, that. like was someone like, was there someone watching this who was like, "I think I'm supposed to like these characters, but I don't." <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure it's obvious that these characters all suck. Now, why yeah, is this I, rule that all the characters in a satire have to be unlikable? Yeah, also, not true. Like... And, you know, I've always, ha- I've always had a personal rule for making characters, and it's that you have to do, like, um... W- at least one of two things to make characters compelling in a program. They either have... To, they, there's two criteria. They gotta be likable and or interesting. Or an and, girl. Or... I mean that's interesting. Yeah. Uh what True. which one of those two does Rakoa Lande fall into? <laughs> oh, she's uh interesting. <laughs> she's very very interesting. There's a lot to discuss about her. Yeah. Yeah. So if if you don't have either of those criteria though, like no, like I don't like your character. Okay, that tracks. So uh and that goes for satire as well because obviously the goal of a satire would be to also tell a story. Yeah, it's got it's got it's got to tell an interesting story, something that I think a good example all, I... of a satire that works with no characters that are really likable uh, is Death of Stalin, which is a movie I don't think Keo's seen, but I know Stare has seen. Yeah, it. I haven't seen it, so like, uh, is that True. about um, okay, so uh, Joseph Stalin? It's about the death of Joseph Stalin. Stalin, but all of the characters are played be... by American and British actors, and they don't even try to hide their accents. Yeah, Steve Buscemi plays Nikita Khrushchev. Yeah, and it's essentially just a bunch of unlikable characters vying for power and trading insults with each other for yeah, like, an, like an hour and a half. Can have, can have a lot of fun with uh, unlikable characters. They they could be um, unlikable yet charismatic. They could be uh, unlikable yet have like a tragic flaw that you can identify and. Uh, relate with yeah and the vast or majority of the characters humans. in those sh- in that movie are all uh, they're all unlikable there's not a single likable character in there but it's a it's still a fun watch because they're all interesting does this mean the sopranos is a satire because i don't think you're supposed to like any of those people i don't think it has to be a satire to have unlikable characters in it yeah the, it, it's the same premise though they're unlikable but they've got a lot of intrigue and yeah. Uh, depth I don't know, them. are you supposed it's to like Christopher? Like... <laughs> no, you're not supposed to like Christopher. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You're supposed to feel sorry for him sometimes, though. That's, that's I mean, I feel boy, sorry for him at the end. <laughs> that's very funny. Michael Imperioli is very good at acting and per- at portraying a guy who's high out of his mind. Yeah. It's wild that no one, that he also hasn't done much since The Sopranos. He's he's on the Sopranos. It's, he's on the Sopranos you podcast. You can't leave, you can't leave the Sopranos. It's just like not gonna happen. Yeah, it's actually become its own mob of sorts where you don't work <laughs> anymore. Actually, and if you do work somewhere else, you'll burn to death like this saint. <laughs> we actually have like a guy at HBO who sounds exactly like Tony Soprano, <laughs> and like if we try to get another job somewhere, like he's gonna be making some phone calls. So. Okay. Wow, I'm surprised that it's Tony, a guy who sounds like Tony, not a guy who sounds like Furio. No, they want to intimidate oh. you by be- making you think that it's actually still James Gandolfini. <laughs> you trying to take my actors? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. So, uh, fun fact, did you know that Michael Imperioli was on The Simpsons? How? Oh, when? 
uh, in like 2006. Oh, not good. Like as a like as a named a uh, celebrity guest. Uh, he played, he played a guy named Dante Jr. Okay. You want to know the name of the episode? Uh, I mean, obviously, I want to know the name of the episode. The Mook, the Chef, the Wife, and her Homer. I, oh, Swanson I don't likes, like this. Don't don't talk. Also, to are me, you Swanson. allowed to say this Mook? Is... <laughs> no, you're not. Hold on. This was. This also has Joe Joe Pantliano. Hey, what what is what does that mean? This episode was written by Bob Odenkirk. Like what? Oh wait, no. Is, this was written by Bill Odenkirk. Okay, Never mind. that makes is, more is sense. Mo- is is Mook <laughs> offensive? Is that like a that's a, like slur, a slur for Italians? For, oh, uh oh. So if I called you that, you'd have to get very angry at me. I didn't know that was a slur for Italians. Uh, my apologies like, for saying the word then twice and right and. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a slur. I think Italians just use it to talk about other Italians who are stupid. It's like okay, but should the Simpsons have have used it? Yeah. Oh, why all not? right. Uh, also, I was looking through here. Uh, he is in uh, Lincoln Rhyme Hunt for the Bone Collector, former episode what? of TV Tuners. Oh, we gotta watch that. We gotta watch that. Do we? He was a. He's he, in ten episodes. He was Lincoln Rhyme's former partner, so I guess he didn't show up in the first episode we watched. I guess we gotta watch ten episodes of this. Mm, you can. Anytime Are you that you devoted? Want. No. <laughs> oh my Maybe god. For the ga- he also Maybe showed up watch. in Project Blue Book, a lost episode of TV Tuners. Oh. Wait, what? Uh, Project Blue Andrew Book Cuomo. was... Um, I don't remember if Sakia watched that show episode with us. It was like an a- It was like a History Channel original yeah. show about... Yeah, Kia was not there. ...about the real-life Project Blue Book, which was like unidentified flying objects... I think I remember that actually. Uh, yeah, it was an awful show. It for was whatever a, reason. Uh, I think it was one of a few episodes that never got released, like when we watched the second season of Iron Fist. I think it was legit lost. Yeah, because uh, I had a computer crash. We lost two. We lost two episodes. I think those were the two. Mm-hmm. Um, we're never gonna watch those shows again. So. Whoa! You'll never believe this, but he was in Goodfellas. Holy shit! That's crazy. <laughs> This guy's legacy. It's untapped. Anyway, um, yeah, so hey, oh, Michael wait. Imperioli, I guess, is doing all right for himself. He was in Shark Tale. He should come, on, he should come on, on the pod. He's got his own pod. We could promote it here. Hey, you know, why yeah, not? He's really probably clamoring for that. He's got a pod. We got a pod. We both talk about The Sopranos probably an equal amount. <laughs> yeah, true. So bring him on. Oh, hey, how about this? Unlike Tony Soprano, James Gandolfini, Michael Imperioli did get to go on The Office. Oh. As a guy named Sensei Billy. Oh, no. What is happening in this universe? We live in it. Anyway, uh... So, this epi- all the, these episodes all have Wikipedia articles. Is yeah. Michael Imperioli that powerful? Yeah. I think it's just that The Office and The Simpsons are popular shows. Oh, no. Um. Anyway, I guess we should. I should get into the Rotten Tomato res- reviews here. Uh, yes. Save the Michael Imperioli chat for you know a buy me a coffee episode down the road. All right. So I got a positive review here. This. Oh, sorry. Hold on. I know what Keo actually wants. Keo. Ron Karn to come to his house. The White Lotus the on Rotten Tomato. Oh, Swanson, you don't. It's certified fresh. Oh. It's 85%, Ooh. the critics say, about this show. Audience is a little okay. less sure. 72%. That's a full bucket of popcorn. It is a full Maybe bucket of popcorn. there's something wrong with our brains. Um, no, I'm going to be vindicated by like the one review on there that's negative and says what I think. Uh, Well, hey, we'll find out. But for now, I'm going to talk about the positive review here. This comes from Tom Long of Detroit News. He has this to say. The White Lotus sneaks essential questions in between the laughs. It is certainly among the year's best TV offerings. A minus. (laughs) 
I love that idea. They just sneak them there's, in there. They're just sneaking like, in some essential questions like, why is a pregnant woman working? <laughs> or like, uh, I, I don't know, what are some other essential questions they sneak in here? Why is testicular cancer a thing? Okay, uh, why is it a thing? Why did you do this to us, God? Yeah. Yeah, other question is, like, why are people, like, not good? Yeah, well, the mainly, I think the main, the main essential question that they ask, they answer, or beg us to answer here is, why rich people? Get rid of them. Yes! Yeah. In a way, I, I think that is the most essential question being snuck into this show. If by snuck in, you mean essentially the thesis statement. Between the laughs, does that imply that this reviewer was, like, laughing a lot at the show? He's hooting and hollering. (laughs) (laughs) Do you think that guy laughed? Do you think that guy would have laughed if he saw that skateboarder smash his nards? Yes. He would would say that there was some questions snuck in between. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there were some questions. Yeah, there was one question snuck in between his legs. (laughs) And it hit him right in the nards. Anyway, uh, I've got a negative review here. This comes from okay. I, I'm ready. This comes from Jonathan Roberts of the New Paper. If you like rich, okay. self-absorbed bores whining and wittering among themselves, fantastic. <laughs> Rating two out of five. Yes. Get their asses. <laughs> this, Go off, King. This is un, This is no amount of hyperbole. The best Rotten Tomatoes blurb I've ever read. Oh my god, thank you. I forgot your name already. Thank you so you much. Drop this. Holds up crown. <laughs> uh, I just, that's, it's succinct and it gets across exactly what the review is saying. And that was exactly what I was saying about characters, right? He said they were both unlikable and boring. Yeah. So I guess we don't need to recap this show. This guy did it for us. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, congratulations, Jonathan Roberts. You are a critic to watch, officially, according to the TV tutors. <laughs> He's in the hall. We got things. your eyes on... We got our eyes on you? Yeah, that's right. I said he, I'll we be have your eyes on you, but I think that's you. wrong. Uh, so, Stair, you got one... Send it on home with a, with a final IMDb, huh? All right. Uh, I feel like this review will speak to all of us. This comes from uh, Thornton B- Burns who writes, Ugly people, so why watch them? (laughs) (laughs) A pointless mess. These people are disgusting in a tropical setting with poor coloring to boot. If I was staying at this resort, I'd do a lot of day trips. Three out of ten. (laughs) Wait, wait. Wow, we're we're so this show has blessed us with both the best Rotten Tomatoes review I've ever heard and the best IMDb review I've ever heard. <laughs> this guy needs to come on the pod. Yeah, hey, listen, if you're you listening, this. IMDb user, if you're listening, come on the pod, please. This is what happens with like I don't know, like a serial killer, but <laughs> TV reviews. Oh, we did multiple reviews for this show. He did a second one. Well, I did a second one, at least. This show has very little to offer. The first episode barely held my eye interest. (laughs) Introducing characters that you want to avoid whenever you're on holiday appear in this six-part series. White Lotus comes across like a mediocre broadcast TV show that's needed for cancellation. We'll see if I can sit through another episode. He's out there another episode. His thoughts were that. Oh, uh, yeah, just... that's one that's more popular. It got 24 out of 57 people found it helpful, as opposed to the original, which was 2 out of 9. But they read as. Uh, it, it's clearly an example of, you know, sometimes the first episode drops and people aren't feeling it, but then word of mouth gets out. So people, also, started, he really... people started reading that first review and they were like, damn, this guy's saying something. Also, he really liked Halston. But did not like your honor. Well, he was vindicated on the last one, <laughs> as we learned. What the hell is Halston? Halston was, was the show the we show. watched where Ewan McGregor was the fashion designer. The first oh, gay guy. <laughs> that show was very forgettable, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, oh, I, I can see I why someone likes review. that show. This one is a little harder for me to swallow in terms of... I think I read his your honor review on the pod. Oh. Okay. I like it, but it's one after another. 
and New Orleans <laughs> scenes show an area that is deserted, except for police patrol. It has a good cast that moves the story along at a quick pace. So many loopholes, it's the title. Well, did you read that? That is true. I think I did. There are there were a lot of loopholes in that episode we watched. Um, Unfortunately, is there any plot holes? Yeah, I think that's what he means. Um, yeah, I feel like this was the exact same reaction you guys had. <laughs> Probably. But there's only one reaction to have to it, honestly. But this, so yeah, this guy needs to come on the pod. Th- this review is just something... It's like a perfect storm. He's talking about a show that we already... Spoilers, don't really like. And he's referring to them all as <laughs> just ugly people. <laughs> I mean, they are ugly people on the inside. Also, his second review no. uses a phrase <laughs> no. that I am now going to keep using, which is that it didn't hold my eye interest. <laughs> it, was, it was not I as in the organ. It was I as in the pronoun. Oh, okay. That's I'm a shame. Sorry. I thought it was that he was talking about his eyes would not pay would not pay attention to the screen. I don't think I'd be able to get past that if that was the case. <laughs> Well, I would stop there, and we would discuss that for the next 30 minutes. No, but Sarah, he's clearly saying they're unattractive, right? Probably. Yeah. Do you think he means it like they're unattractive physically, or that their characters are unattractive? Physically. I'm pretty... That's the vibe I got from this... From, yeah. from that post. Uh, all right, well... Hey, that's a little sneak peek of what uh, other people thought of The White Lotus. Stay tuned, and uh, you'll hear what we thought about the show later. We hated it. Uh, for now, though, let us let let me ask a question I ask every week here on the pod. What'd you watch this week? Anything fun? Interesting? No. Absolutely not. Oh, okay. Nothing fun. Interesting. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be completely honest with you, Swanson. I've uh, not watched a single thing. All right, I guess that just leaves me here with things that I've watched. watched I watched Headshot starring Nico Uwe's. Did somebody die in that? A lot of people died. Was it fun? No. Oh, that's no Was it entertaining? You know how Terminator 2 has like four separate sequences that could be the end of a movie? Yeah. All right, stacked up at the end? Uh, this movie does that, but it just tires you out, and it's not... They're, it kind of peaks after the first one they do. Dang. And all the others just get progressively worse. Yikes. It also has the same problem as uh, Nobody, starring Bob Odenkirk, where the film really peaks in terms of action with the fight on a bus in the first act. Ooh, okay. So, tune out. Anything else? No. Uh, I, I watched, uh, or rather finished watching, I suppose, Loki. Okay. Uh, it is, it is a tale of two halves, let's say. The first three episodes really take their time to, uh, so you say the show is bisexual, like Loki. Yes. Yeah, but it's bisexual in the sense that one half is not good and the other half is good. Like so bisexuals. The, the heterosexual half is the bad part. Yes. Sure. If you want to look at it from uh, that uh, perspective. The first three episodes the correct perspective. do a lot of uh, thing. I think they're trying to set up for the last half, but they don't. it doesn't feel like a cohesive whole in a fun way. Uh, but the last, five, the last three episodes are really, really fun and really good. And more of what I would actually want to see from a Loki TV show. Especially but one involving it's, it's, time stuff. But, as you said, it fails the three-episode test, so you shouldn't mess with it. Tune out. I would say give it a light tune-in. Uh, maybe if you really like Marvel or Loki stuff, it's definitely worth a watch, especially the last episode. But uh, there's potential here if the second the second season might be able to right the wrongs of this one. Um, does, the, does Thanos show up? No, Keo, Thanos is tune dead. Out. Do not. Spoiler, 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 so, spoiler, so, spoiler. So, so Kang the Conqueror so, shows up. Did Quattro Bajina show up? No, I just said Kang the Conqueror shows up, a time traveler from Loki, of, of Marvel fame. Loki's dead too, so Thanos can show up as well if he needs to. True. Well, Loki's not dead this. in the dead in the technical sense. No. <laughs> uh, also, the the show pays off the 
uh, multiple Loki's thing by having a bunch of them, including one that's an alligator. That's fun. Do they fuck? Uh, yeah. No, but Loki does kiss another Loki. Oh, yeah, good enough. It, is, it does have to be a female version, but it is another <laughs> Loki. Yes. Oh, that's not good enough. I mean, who knows? Maybe in season two, me. he finally kisses a man. Well, then they can't air it in China. Or they'll be beheaded there. I don't know. I, if, D- I don't know if Disney Plus is even in China. How could they not put it in China? I don't know. Does China have any streaming services from America? Uh, honestly, I I couldn't tell you, but I'm pretty sure people want their money really bad. Yeah, true. I'm sure they're. I'm sure Netflix at the very least is in China. Um, but Netflix also does not shy away from having just gay stuff in their <laughs> inventory. I mean, they can have it in China, but just, like, curate it for a Chinese audience, I guess. Yeah. Uh, they do that already with uh, with us. Very true. Uh, although yes. I did read an article the other day about how Netflix apparently has helped uh, numerous Americans learn the reads to watch things with subtitles. Oh, good for them. So I guess that's uh, one good thing that Netflix has done. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would give it a light tune in. Other than that, nothing much. Zeta Gun, do we want to talk about that? Um, near the end, uh, I'll give my final assessment of it when I finish it. Probably next record. But for now, let's just say women? things are getting wild. Do you want to talk about women on the battlefield? Yeah, the show really you has know, a I... thing to say about that. <laughs> What is I, that? I, Can you figure like, that out I, for me? My opinion is I like women, but battlefields are pretty bad. I don't like so it when women die. I don't like it when women are on the battlefield. I don't like it when men are on the <laughs> battlefield. I, I don't just, like it I when want, women are the battlefield. I like it when the woman is the subject of a battle. Do you like it when the woman is like uh, mentally uh, mentally coerced into joining a dark force? Yes. Okay. I find that compelling. <laughs> Do you like it when a woman coerces you into doing stuff? Yes. Okay, same. Do you like it when a woman comes back from seeming death only to die again episodes later? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like heroically sacrificing themselves and getting their own insert song while they do so. Only to c- come back and immediately die. Sacrificing <laughs> themselves again. Hey, what's up with that, Swanson? <laughs> I don't know. Ask... To ask Tomino. What if I told you it's going to get even more ridiculous than that? Oh, well, I mean, I believe you because I've heard nothing but... The the vast majority of what I've heard from Zeta outside of it's really good is it's really sad. <laughs> and also kind of sexist with it. Well, yeah, but so was regular yeah, Gundam. I, are you at the part where uh, Fa gets her own mobile suit, and each episode is wildly differing in whether or not the show wants her to be in this suit or not. Um, what do you mean by her own mobile suit? Because she was piloting a suit earlier. Oh, she's got the Methus. Yeah, I think she's had one. it for a bit. And some episodes she's competent, and the other one, the show's like, you're an idiot. Yeah, well... Get out of there. I got to a you're point... You're fit to be a pilot. I got to a point where some people are like, huh, why don't we have Fa pilot this? And Bright Noah's like, I will not let her pilot another mobile suit. Yeah, the reason for that is they had, they had different writers for each episode and they were not talking to each other. Oh, that sounds like a bad writer's room. Yeah. Anyway, One of them was um, really mad about women. We'll, I'll give a final uh, thesis, a final tune in, tune out on Zeta Gundam next week. If you don't get so, well. if you don't get too sad. Yeah, if I don't cry. Or kill yourself. If I don't see the tears of time. <laughs> Oh, you will see them. Oh, no. You will experience them. Uh, Alright, well, let's get to the news then, huh? You know, that's a, that's a really good tagline for a show with a happy ending. <laughs> You'll experience the tears of time. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is that a good tagline for a happy ending show? Just like, you w- will you survive? Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> 
That's like, oh, sh- serious shit is going to happen next week. I got to see that. Yeah. yeah. Who who will survive? That's just like, a, it's a hype, but you, you will see the tears of time. It's just like, oh. Will you survive, Char and this weird lobster robot? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, we got news, and I'm going to talk about it oh, here. Oh, we do? Yeah, uh, we got news. Okay. And I got I got one thing to clue you into this yeah. news item. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, uh, T.J. Hooker. Soprano. That's the sound that you hear if you're not a defense attorney. Uh, the Law and Order <laughs> franchise, as we've talked about, has a long, long history of making defense attorneys the criminal uh, masterminds. Uh, they usually play bad guys, especially in like SVU. They're the bad guys usually. Yes. Um, Typically, they're responsible good. for most of the rapes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at least responsible for defending the most of them. Uh, so th- actually, I think what my client did was good, and I'm gonna help them do more. <laughs> I actually helped him myself to do the crime. So it was all the more confusing when a few months ago uh, they announced they announced that Law and Order was going to be working on a uh, series for defense attorneys called Law and Order for the Defense. I'm, I'm picturing though, like they try to like do like a Breaking Bad thing where they're just like a bunch of like criminals and you're just watching their exploits. <laughs> oh, and how do we get this criminal off scot free? <laughs> they're all in like a darkly lit room, smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah, they just got done murdering somebody. <laughs> yeah, there's a dead body in the middle of the room. <laughs> how do we cover this up? Hold on, let me light my cigar before I answer your question. <laughs> I need to I need to step out and commit a rape. <laughs> <laughs> the show uh, Law and Order for the Defense was going to be a show about criminal defense, a criminal defense firm, and then each episode would build on quote unquote the promise of a contemporary more ta- morality tale. Whoa. Lofty. Uh, so it was odd to uh, say the least that these people who have been working so long against the idea of defense attorneys would now be working on a show that essentially was about them. Uh, well, they don't have to worry about it I, any longer. I just, I just like the idea of depicting like doing defense attorney stuff is like a moral dilemma inherently. Yeah. Not that you're just like making sure people have basic rights protection under the law. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, th- uh, they don't have to worry about this anymore though, because, uh, Without much of an explanation for why it's being pulled, NBC and Dick Wolf create. Uh, have oh, been, I know why. Have yeah, I think we all know why. But uh, they have they have decided that they're not going to go ahead with this program. Yeah, in the wake of the George Floyd protests, the NYPD probably wanted shows that make the police look theoretically bad. Yeah, but not actually. They want ones where there's one bad police officer, but the rest is fine. Um, so yeah, they, uh, they're quick to say that there are, they are planning on working on other Law and Order shows in the future, but probably not ones where any criminals might have actual rights. (laughs) So, uh, Law and Order for the Defense lines up with, uh, other shows that we've discussed that were in the, in the makings for Law and Order, like Law and Order Hate Crimes. (laughs) A show that I cannot believe even made it past the thought stage. <laughs> I'm, I really just want to see a show where, where it's about the dilemma of a defense attorney who's just like he like I picture a scene where he's like talking to like this like serial killer, he, and he's like he kills and eats people, and the defense attorney's just like, "Listen, I'm gonna get you out back on the streets, buddy." <laughs> I don't think he. I don't think. <laughs> I'm gonna do whatever it takes to make sure you're free to eat. <laughs> There's gonna be food on your man's, table. Man's gotta eat. <laughs> Big boy's gotta get his supper. Well, and the episode ends with him eating the cop who arrested him or his family. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just says executive producer Dick Wolf. It's like cartoonish too. Cooks, it's like too, too many, cook- many yeah, cooks. Yeah, exactly. There's just a leg on the table next to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, so we won't, sadly, we won't get to see anything quite like that on the Law and Order universe, but I'm sure they've got something else they're working on. One day I'll be in the TV industry. Yeah. Well, they did do we, some real changes. We did do Law and Order Organized Crime. That was a f- uh, previous episode of the pod. So I guess what it's probably. What part? There'll pro- probably be something like that, right? Where we'll be like Law and Order uh, Fire Time, where they're doing fire investi- arson. <laughs> Law and Order Arson <laughs> Investigation. Yeah, and one of the investigators is. Uh pyrophilia yeah exactly so it's just <laughs> he grapples with with crushing guilt over it, it. so it's just like a uh, stalker <laughs> where, <laughs> yeah where dylan mcdermott's character ends up being a stalker yeah and it should be played by dylan mcdermott the the pervert arsonist just put, yeah but just keep putting them in law and order stuff <laughs> why not right? yeah what's it's stopping you uh but let's move away from NBC and over to the wonderful world of HBO Max. Uh, the streaming service okay. has... Uh, they're doing okay, I guess, but they, they're they trying to appeal to as many people as possible since they're technically a burgeoning streaming service. And uh, they, they found a way that might help them appeal to young people, at least in their eyes. And that's by mm-hmm. using the, pra- the platform Snapchat to offer free episodes <laughs> of uh, various shows. Can you explain that to me? I thought Snapchat was like you sent like a little like a little video to people and they could watch it. Yeah, instead you're sending them the Christopher Columbus episode of The Sopranos talking <laughs> about whether it's hackneyed or not. Uh, so this is referred to as HBO Max Mini. It's currently only available in the United States. But uh, it launches instantly in your Snapchat and offers age-appropriate episodes based on the user's age. <laughs> and is available on iOS and Android. Uh, it's an app. The app includes a function that allows you to watch shows together with as many as sixty-three Wait, of your closest it, friends with a chat. So it's not Snapchat. It's chat. It's on Snapchat. I, how's it on Snapchat if it's a separate app? It's not. Yeah. It's a feature on Snapchat. Wow. Uh, oh, that's crazy. Why would Snapchat's they do this? a wild thing that I don't even think many teens use. I don't know how many. I mean, I, outside of like speaking to one another in turn in the forms of like <laughs> pictures i don't know if people use snapchat very often team like people younger than the age of i don't know snapchat 18 it's even still a thing i mean they it's should be a on thing, TikTok. but like i'm pretty sure like all, all the all the youngsters i've been around have been like on snapchat yeah i mean uh, i don't know if they're still on it but they definitely were on it we should get i hope the youngsters are watching the sopranos well, I also hope they're watching Realm. Well, they can't watch either of those shows on uh, HBO Max Mini. Uh, because what oh. you get is, of course, you only get a select few episodes. You don't get the whole thing, obviously. But you get stuff such as Game of Thrones, the remake of uh, the new reboot of Gossip Girl, uh, Looney Tunes. This is a strange marketing move, Swanson. This is bizarre to me. I, I can't wrap my head around it. Like, you go on. A chat application to watch a TV show? Well, to be fair, Snapchat does have a bunch of things. that You can play games on Snapchat and stuff, so it's fine. They they re- they really just made this into like a... It's just like a strange conglomerate platform, I guess. Yeah, it's a weird place to be. Uh, I feel like it's... I'm not... It, I feel like it appeals to too many things, and therefore that's probably why I don't care for it. Um, now I'm just imagining TikToks themed around characters on Deadwood saying cocksucker. I'm sure that's somewhere on Perhaps TikTok. Perhaps while pop music is playing. I'm sure you can find that. And and some text is on the screen explaining what's happening. <laughs> but the the world is your oyster with these. You can find these shows, and uh, I guess the whole point is that you can you can get a, it'll uh, compel you to get a subscription to HBO Max, which I don't know about all that. But uh, hey, why not? It's not like there's ever been an idea where it was gonna. It was about sitting on your screen, on your phone screen, and watching a TV show. And quick bites. Yeah. Well, if this isn't even quick bites. It's just you're spending twenty plus minutes, minutes looking at a tiny screen instead of the bigger screen that you would watch something on. Like I feel like. Can you believe Qu- Quibi didn't do good? Uh. Hmm. 
No, it's. I should have put Thunderbolt Gundam on Quibi. That would have been a killer app. Yeah, it would have been cool. Yeah. Uh, you want to watch Thunderbolt Gundam on your phone? You can't see any of the details. <laughs> yeah, you're. That's the thing. Like, there's a reason that the only thing like most people don't use their phones to watch TV shows. Would you even, like, if you saw a friend of yours, a alleged friend, and they were watching a show, like an entire TV show, on their phone, wouldn't you be, like, afraid? Yeah. That's a person with a threatening aura. That's how Keo feels when he hears us laughing at that man's nerds. Yeah, I would ask, like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing this? And they're just like, I'm just watching a program. (laughs) <laughs> it's like what well, well, why on your phone like you're not even like out somewhere uh, this is just how I like it yeah I would I uh, there'd be two things I would do one of them is to leave the other one would be to try to date this person oh okay like uh, what's the reason for the latter I I look for a little bit of danger oh yeah you danger of like the throat slitting variety <laughs> yeah. yeah a person so concerned with time efficiency they would make such a sacrifice in their media consumption <laughs> yeah dark and twisted mind I could see an episode yeah, they would of kill like, me just for expediency for sure the, I could see an episode of criminal minds about a person like that the unsub watches <laughs> shows on their phone as a method of <laughs> dealing with the Harshness of reality. Because they do not have time to turn their TV on <laughs> and change the channel. Their family never owned the TV, and therefore they coped by watching on their phone. They also kill in the quickest way possible. <laughs> A gun. <laughs> <laughs> this, there should be more serial killers on that show who use guns. On tonight's program, <laughs> we investigate the mystery of the gun guy killer. <laughs> yeah, let's listen. Just get a gun. I want to just let you guys know there are many ways of killing people, but the best way is to just wait for them to die. There are a lot of opportunity costs involved in that one, Keo. Yeah. Like, how do you know you're not going to go first? Oh, come yeah, on. then you can't even verify that they died. Yeah, the oh, but, oh. the best way to kill somebody in my in my world is to make eye contact with them, salute them and then blow them up with a rocket launcher. <laughs> yes. Which is a form of gun. It's true. Yeah. It's a hard it's hard to pull off too, but if you can do it, listen, the the amount of satisfaction you get from that is enough to make you change your name. Also, more than likely, you probably won't go to court. I mean, yeah, who's going to believe probably that that not. happened? I mean, no if one. you get, if it gets to the point where you have a rocket launcher and you're blowing people's heads off with them, I don't think that <laughs> a lot of stuff has got to gone wrong at that point. The judge, judge isn't going to want to deal with that. If there are any judges left. Yeah, because they're going to be like, oh, well, if I try to put him in jail... What's stopping him? He's just gonna shoot me with the rocket launcher. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't know how many rockets you have. Free to go, sir. Yeah, maybe you have like a backpack that reloads a rocket launcher. It's hard to say. You have like a little, like you have like a little man who like follows you and brings you like more ammo. There's a little man in your chest who pilots you around, (laughs) (laughs) so you can dodge a police officer's bullets. And he made sure to remove the safety limiters on you so you can go really fast. Ooh, I do like going really fast. <laughs> and I like the idea of Char being inside me. <laughs> yeah. You know who else liked that idea? Garma, so watch out, buddy. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, yeah, congratulations to HBO Max. We'll see how your Snapchat endeavors go, I imagine, uh, poorly. All right, $10 well, million dollars earned day one. <laughs> uh, well, with all that out of the way, let's get to a segment near and dear to everybody's hearts. It's Trailer Blazers. Hit the theme, Keo Ryan. Hit the theme, Stare. Uh, Adam Major Adam Major Nye. 
So yeah, uh, we watched a, we watched a trailer for this thing here, this Netflix original show. It's called Clickbait. This yes. Uh, Keo, we, we are in, we're in luck mirror. with this one because it's over. It's like it, it's almost exactly one minute long, which is a fair review length. Yeah, it's a fair trailer length. I mean, a, I say review. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I'm sleep deprived, guys. Okay, that's why. I, I'm not drunk, guys. All right. Just want to let you guys know, I didn't drink enough to get drunk. I just drank like ten drinks. Oh, Keo. Oh no. Shot. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, this trailer is pretty straightforward. Essentially, it's this guy seems like a normal, hu- good husband, brother, family man. Yeah, with the with the ominous typewriter. Yeah, it seems like a normal text dude. Going over. And then we find him in like he's like trapped in like a dank cave <laughs> <laughs> with uh with, with like a sign saying "I abuse women." <laughs> and it says after over after five million views, I die. So essentially, it okay. sets up what the show's gonna be pretty good, uh, pretty well, I suppose. Right? Like it gives you a, cl- a glimpse of what they're going with here, right? Okay, this is honestly a good trailer for what looks like a really stupid show. Yeah, the show <laughs> looks dumb, but the trailer makes me go, huh. How dumb is this going to get? This looks like a rejected Black Mirror script. And also, this should just be a movie. If you have a guy trapped in a thing and there's a ticking clock, that's a movie. I'm sorry. Yeah, but... Didn't you, want, didn't you like really enjoy a program where there's a ticking clock and there's like a guy running around like punching people? Oh, yes. Well, there's multiple ticking clocks in that show, usually. Yeah, but you could have made like six movies out of that franchise. Probably. That probably would have been better. Um. Oh. Well, Keo or Stairmaster, rather. Yes. Uh, Hello. The thing is, you could just you could make a movie out of like half the TV shows ever made. True. At least in the at least since like I don't know two thousand six. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so this is it no do, different. It, it really de- it really depends on what they fill that time with. If it's just like stalling, then yeah, I would agree. Yeah. But who knows? Well, it's Netflix, so I've, I'm going to lean heavily towards <laughs> oh. stalling. Okay, good point. Fair. But um, yeah, the, I mean, the trailer at least makes me wonder, all right, this is either going to be really boring or really stupid. Let's hope it's really stupid. Like, I want hostages levels of dumb with this show. Yeah, I I just have to strongly appreciate a trailer that tells me what the show is gonna like. Give me a vibe for the show, and like it's like not super long. Mm-hmm. It, it gave me more information about the show than any of those two minute trailers we saw. Also, I was clicking like, on a video of a man who, after he gets enough views, dies. Clickbait. I I think it only if it, he it, lives. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> I think clickbait applies nowadays not to lying to people, but just to like yes. put a provocative thumbnail and picture. Yes, that's true. This man won't last ten seconds. <laughs> Run time fifty nine minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you know, I guess stay tuned. We'll, maybe we'll cover this show if we find out that it's pretty dumb, or we'll be like, "Wow, this- what a boring show." This video made me come ten times. <laughs> it's just the and picture the of this like... man beaten and bloodied holding a sign. <laughs> yeah. And the video is like th- four seconds long. <laughs> single ladies in your area? <laughs> yeah, it's just a single woman. <laughs> the one secret they don't want you to know about. And it was like a guy like getting on the bus or something. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, we'll see what clickbait has for us. Maybe. Are we going to watch it on the pod, Swanson? I don't know. The trailer made me want to at least look at it. I mean, I am like, depends on what it's up against. Yeah. Let's just you know, watch always... Gundam instead. Oh, what Gundam? Which, which one? Uh, mm, or careful. in the pocket. All right. Okay. That's good. 
That's what I, that's, that's what it's all about. So that's, I think that's a, it's been a, it's a first or a really long time since we've actually watched a trailer that was like succinct, got it, everything it needed across and mostly kept us intrigued. Made us, yeah, we like, I'm intrigued. I, I would watch this if I, if somebody like dangled it in front of me, I would look at it. And the worst part is that it refers to itself on the video clip as a teaser. That's just, it's just a trailer. It's not a teaser. It's not teasing anything. It's just telling me. Yeah, a teaser would be like 2021. So, Five million. <laughs> yes. Like, like a teaser is not, a, a minute long does not make a teaser. There's nothing being teased in a minute. Yeah, it's like if we made a teaser for TV tuners, it would be like, like we show like a picture of Stairmaster, like, like on the ledge, like looking down, and like the wind is blowing in his hair, and he smirks. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I would love that. And then he just says like twenty twenty five. That is the year the podcast will end. So true. Uh, so write that down in your calendar. A lot of things are going to end in twenty twenty five. Like the beach is gonna be gone. Yes. All that will be left is old person beach. That's how they get you. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be like you'll be you'll be going to different beaches and you'll be like, oh, this beach isn't open. This beach is gone. And then the, finally you'll stumble upon one. You'll be like, finally beach. And then as you're <laughs> hanging out there enjoying beach, you're like, oh no, I've become old. And you're too old though. Get out of the beach. And then you die. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's it for Trailer Blazers. Let's get to what we watched this week, huh? No. We watched a we show. We already did that. Oh, we- yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I thought you said. For some reason, I was thinking of what did we watch. That's true. Like, I sh- what I should have said is what I normally say, which is let's get to our main event. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we watched a show this week, and now we're going to talk about it. The White Lotus follows the vacations in various of various hotel guests over the span of a week as they relax and rejuvenate in paradise. But with each passing day, a darker complexity emerges in these picture-perfect travelers, the hotel's cheerful employees, and the idyllic locale, locale itself. Uh, did the White Lotus leave you in paradise, or did it leave you in an awkward situation? Yeah, um, that's a tune out on this show. Oh. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, you know, you all you, 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 you didn't like it, sure, but we got a show to talk about here. You know, there's stuff to talk about. I bet. Mm. No, it's Sarah? a tune out, Watson. Oh, well, all right. I mean, I was I was going to give it a tune in, but I guess why? Yeah, but it, we're tuning out on that. So that's that's it for TV tuners. That's like it the- for trailer blazers. Um. Thanks for coming by, everybody. I mean, is there, is there nothing else we want to talk about? Uh, mostly, if we recap this, it would just be like it's going, yeah, that happened. She's annoying. This woman is too old and should have died a long time ago. And she's not even that old, but she's clearly lived too long. There are, yeah, I guess there are not any characters that are redeeming in this show. Like, Autistics then is kind of like... He's an innocent, but he's stare not master, like... He's stare master representation, so that's good, I guess. Yeah, have you ever... Stare, were you ever at the beach and your dad uh, was too busy looking at his balls to enjoy a quality no, time with you? Of, but all of our conversations are like that. You ever go snorkeling and see seaweed and call it gross? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see Stare doing that. If Stare had a sibling, I guarantee you they would lo- they would put him in the kitchen to sleep. Yes, exactly. I, mean, I just love the idea of just going to the beach and going snorkeling and just coming back on land and being like, yeah, that was gross. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean... Wh- These crystal clean, this crystal clean water. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Keo, you, that would be something you love about the beach, right? Is if it wasn't all salty. That crystal uh, clean yeah. water. I want to. I want to go to the beach, and I want to just be able to grab a glass and just scoop up the water and drink it. But you can't. I'd, it's like, mm, 
Or you would die. You know? What if what that. if in old beach you were able to do that? <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, that's the tr- that that's the trade off for aging rapidly is you get to drink the water. Yeah, it's like crystal clean water that's fresh. Why are we talking about old beach so much? Because it's a dumb idea that is. <laughs> it's all it's a meme all over the internet right now. Is there yeah. memeing on this? Oh, there's tons of memes about old beach on this. Listen, there's, Kia, there's... it's a beach that makes you go old. Is Mr. Memer talking about it? There's lots of yes. memes. Yeah, listen, there's lots of memes going on about that one. Memes are all over oh, the place. that's crazy. In fact, uh, you know, we don't need to... Listen, we already know White Lotus has a tune out. We don't even need to talk about it. Let's just talk about old beach. But old, old beach, is that a tune out? We don't know. Oops. That's the thing. It, it's a new movie. I, mean, I never... As of this recording, it is two days released... Or I guess, yeah. Roughly. I never, never watched it, but it, you, you guys are telling me before it was by Midnight Shelly Man, right? Yeah, that's right. Yes, Old Beach. Old Beach. That's the not official title. Con- not to be confused with Old Boy. No, totally different movie. There's no, no one is turning old in that movie rapidly. So, I mean, those people who are getting their knees broken with hammers, that's sort of like aging. Earlier in the evening, Stairmaster did not did tell me, he asked me a hypothetical question. He asked me if, uh, what would it be like? What would I do? I don't know what it was, but what if there was a beach and when you go there, you get old? And I'm thinking like, oh, Stairmaster made this up. <laughs> Something he just came up with like in a fever dream. <laughs> And I told him, you know, I wouldn't go to that beach. And he looked at me in the eyes, like, like soulfully staring at me. He said, yes. you don't know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, I, I mean, I want to talk about what I know about the movie Old. But before I get okay. to, before we get to that, I did look up some some memes I found on the internet. Oh, okay. Uh, the, TP Tuner's meme review. These are these are all yeah. these are all from uh, Twitter. Let it be known, this is not a pre-planned segment. Swanson just did this on the fly right now. Yeah, I saw. I just yeah, saw doing... them and wanted to talk about them. So, uh, okay. can you guys, give me your thoughts on each of these. Uh, okay. This are we gonna tune in or tune out on them? Sure. Uh, this first one is from Zach Silverberg at Zach Siller- Silverberg. T-shirt that says, I went to the beach that makes you old, and all I got was old. Oh. <laughs> uh, what? Be, what that? Be, that would be very funny as a T-shirt. Like, one of those T-shirts that says, on, I went to this, and all I got was a lousy T-shirt or something like that. But it's, I went to the beach that makes you old, and all I got was old. Uh, you would expect that, though. I'm confused. Yeah. All right. Well, this is another one from Zach Silverberg. Tune out. Yeah, can I get one in a size old? <laughs> okay, what is... T- <laughs> oh, gosh, fun. <laughs> what is this guy doing? Tune in. I like this direction that the memers are taking, where it's just degenerating into schizophrenia. Okay, uh, I was I was going to keep saying the name, but it, these are all from... Until further notice, these are all from Mr. Silverberg. So he, you just went and looked up uh, these memes, and he's the only one posting them. I guess apparently, but uh, this is the classic Anakin and Padme are talking in the f- in the field, uh, and oh, he says, well, "Anakin yeah. says, let's go to the beach." Padme says, "Not the one that makes you old, right?" <laughs> and then it's pic- two pictures of them as old people. <laughs> that's not bad. Okay, that's a fun. That's fun because they played with the format. But that meme yeah. format is kind of structurally unsound because you really know what's going on with the first two panels and then yeah. last two are superfluous. Uh, breaking news. Jason Derulo has fallen down the stairs at the beach that makes you old. And it's a skeleton <laughs> that looks like Jason Derulo falling down the stairs. What are you talking about? What are the Derulos? Hold on. Have you not heard about this meme? It's from like years ago where Jason Derulo fell down the stairs at like a... Who? Grand- He's a singer. <laughs> He fell down the stairs at the Grammy Awards, and someone took a photo of him mid-tumble down the stairs. And all the tweet said was, breaking news, Jason Derulo has fallen down the stairs at the Grammy Awards. Still rest knows how I feel half the time now, where you guys are just, like, belting off these names, like, I'm supposed to know. (laughs) Tune out on that one, because I don't... Yeah, but can we see the photo? And we'll 
see if we tune in or out on that. Yeah, and yeah, that might be funny if I saw the picture. That's but true. All right, know. here I'll give, I'll show you the photo, and uh, Keo can describe what it is. A classic okay. segment on the pod. Yeah, like the this this podcast that should just be a video. At this this point. podcast that should not exist. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, I can I get the idea here, but. I don't get it. He's falling down the steps on the watch. beach that makes you old. You need to why show people, it to the original. <laughs> why are people? Why are people helping him if he's a skeleton in this picture? Yeah, I wanted to see the original Swanson. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, sure. I don't think the original is funny either. Well, we won't know until we see it. No, the original is pretty funny. I will admit. Well, I'll I'll see. I'll be the judge of that, Swanson. All right. Oh, Keo's gonna hate this because this guy's landing directly on his balls. <laughs> Close. <laughs> okay, it's funny. It's funny because he's hitting his head instead of his balls. <laughs> it's funny because I don't understand how this physically happened. He fell, <laughs> I think he fell from the top of the steps. And this is him. Okay, I, 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 I guess down. it's. If I saw the video, it wouldn't be funny, but the picture is funny. Does that make sense? Yeah, because he's defying laws of physics. It, presumably, yeah, right? Yeah, from if you look at just this, you don't understand how ha- it happened. Is that Paul Walker yeah, in the back? In reality, though, this would be like a very brutal fall that yeah, probably man, hurt you. Like, fuck really off, that man is dead. He is broken <laughs> in half. All right, was he okay? He's got the yeah, Benoit he's disease. He, okay. he has not been, as far as I know, he's not been Benoit. Well, he hasn't been wad anyone. Uh, all right. So this one, this is the last one from Mr. Silverberg. It says, "No longer must you choose," and it's the thing of the guy sweating over which button to press, but he's pressing both of them, <laughs> and it says, "Beach day, getting old." <laughs> all right, that's fine. Tune in on that. This guy, guy, this guy's on a real meme bender here, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. How many followers does this guy have? Three million. Uh, he has 14.5k. Fuck off. Fuck this guy. Tune out. Simmaster's upset because these these were like okay at best, but he has a lot of followers. Yeah. Yeah. True. Uh, so yeah. yeah I, we love to have him on the pod, though. He can give us uh, more listeners. But not, probably. If, not if Michael Imperioli is a scheduling conflict with him. It's true. Or the IMDb guy. Or the Rotten Tomatoes guy. Who who is Michael Imperi? The Christopher. It's Christopher. Oh, okay, yeah, I already forgot. I'm Fair a toxic. All right, there are some memes from some other people though. I think Stair's gonna like this one that I found. This is from Jay okay. Merriman. He says, "Every beach makes you older." Frederick Nietzsche. <laughs> okay, I like that one. Yeah, that. I if I was smarter and more well read, I would get the joke. But I'm too stupid. The well, joke is you didn't say that. Okay. It just sounds like I, something you would say. But I don't know what he says is the problem. Okay. I know he says stuff. He like he's like he, a smart man. He thinks about he's things. He's like a philosopher he boy. Yeah. Is that the whole thing? That's the whole joke. He's a philosopher. He says something he didn't say. That's the joke. Okay, so here's one from Tommy Wiseau. Today's words: pride, integrity. Love you all. T W. Is that beach? Uh, he looks like he's dressed for the beach. Got like uh, that. That's beach clothes. Like he's wearing like a long sleeve t-shirt. Yes, uh, it might be short sleeve. So I guess the real question we got to throw out there for everybody is: Is this better than talking about the show? <laughs> no. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I don't want to talk about the show. All right. Well, I've got what one last we... one for before I before I re- look at the Wikipedia page for old. This is from April okay. of Audio Gain Files. Forgetting that I just drank 12 beers on the beach. What the fuck? I think this beach is making us all extremely <laughs> drunk. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't, uh, I don't get it. Yeah. Oh, well, it's not that good. I get it, but... It's drunk beach. I get it, but I don't get it. I don't get why it's Yeah, funny. that's the worst when you get something, but you also don't get it. You know that feel, guys? Yeah, I feel like a lot of people yeah. get that when they listen to this. Oh, that's how I felt when I watched Drive the first time. 
That's how I felt I when like, I watched oh, old in theaters. <laughs> all right, so uh, yeah, this is an M Night Shyamalan movie. It's got people in it who I don't know. Uh, the end. <laughs> <laughs> It was delayed thanks to the pandemic. Basically, the premise is the plan. The the plan. The pandemic. Yeah, the pandemic that was made to get you old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one year older. We lost a year on that. Shorter of breath and one day closer to death. So it is about uh, a married couple who travel to a tropical resort, mm-hmm. and on the it's like the White Lotus. On the advice of the resort's manager, they visit a secluded beach. Also occupied by rapper Midsize Sedan. Yes. And a few other people. Uh, and tragedy strikes when uh, the body of Midsize Sedan's female companion is discovered. Which is followed by someone else suddenly dying. Of old age. Yeah. Uh, some of the children become teenagers. Everyone starts rapidly aging. Stuff like that's happening. Uh, yeah. It seems like that's the, that's the whole premise there is people are getting old. How much old age makeup do you think is in this movie? All of it. Probably enough, right? Yeah, I have to assume. Does it only make people older? Or could they put, like, radioactive material in there and it would decay faster and generate more electricity? Uh, I think they only... I think the first thought that these people apparently had was, let's put people here and see what happens. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, is it like a beach that time is faster, or is it a beach that that causes? I guess it's like it is. It has to be time, right? Because it doesn't just age you. Because aging is not the same thing as growing. If time it's, flowed faster on the beach, they could put a computer, a supercomputer there, and it would be proportionally faster than the outside world. They they could mine like they could mine a lot of bitcoins. Yeah, there's a fortune to be made off of this beach. Imagine the news breaking on this whole thing, like. Some Breaking guys. beach makes you old. <laughs> Listen, there's no way that they find the government hears about beach that makes you old and they shut that shit down. <laughs> they don't let that story get out. They would nuke the beach. They would just nuke it. They, yeah, they would wipe the beach off the face of it. Yeah, but since time flows faster, the nuke would be even more powerful, proportionally speaking. How, pre- no, it would well, get, the pressure well, wave would be stronger because time is It would just faster. sink the beach and then the fish would get age rapidly. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and they start evolving faster? Yeah, so we just get a bunch of reboot. fish people. <laughs> That's, uh, listen, M. Night, this is your sequel, baby. You heard of old? Now get ready for fish. Are they friendly? What no, the guy not. from Split went to Old Beach? Would he age, or would his superpowers keep him intact? What was that it's there? The guy from Split. Uh, I'm pretty sure he would age. Because it's his body, it's not like... The, his, mind yeah, would, but, his mind wouldn't change. Yeah, but his mind gives him superpowers, I thought. Uh, I don't remember how that movie goes. Well, let's watch Split. All right. Someone buy us a copy for Split. Yeah. And listen, uh, I think that's about it for <laughs> this week's episode of the show. Uh, I, I think I'm going to safely, safely say uh, that for me, personally, I'm not telling anyone else. I'm just saying for me, that's a tune out on old after reading that. <laughs> okay, but yeah. what about the White Lotus? I mean, yeah, obviously, well, the White Lotus is it's a tune out regardless of what I say. Yeah, I'm, okay, my real opinion on the White Lotus is that it was, quote, unpleasant. The comedy was too dry for my opinion. Yeah, it was... It needed to be a little bit more ridiculous. I I would say it's a little too cringe, because the comedy doesn't make up for the fact... The, the way cringe comedy is supposed to work is that the situation is still funny, even when you're cringing about it. Yeah, like a guy busting his balls at the Olympics. Ooh. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're supposed to laugh. You're not supposed to, like, feel bad, necessarily. Um, you're not supposed to go, oh! Exactly. Oh! <laughs> oh! Holy whoa! Mom, that's in the corner. <laughs> hey, don't! You won't believe what happened at the Olympics! This guy busted his nods! <laughs> so, uh... Well, yeah, that's that's it for TV tuners. Uh, yeah. Bye. Hey, listen. Bye, a copy. If, yeah, if you've got... <laughs> If you liked this episode and you thought, 
boy, I bet you I could get him to talk about a lot of things on Wikipedia, and it would be compelling <laughs> podcasts. Well, well, that's a bad idea, but go ahead. Yeah, it's a bad idea, but why don't you put your money where your mouth is and buy us a coffee? You can do that and get yourself an episode based on anything you want us to talk about, preferably a TV show or a movie or something of that variety. Uh, and all you have to do is a single coffee gets us a single episode to talk about a thing of your choosing. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's, it's over at Buy Me a Coffee slash TV Tuners. Go do that. Uh, those episodes, we'll be getting back to that stuff shortly. Uh, probably it's been a month or so, right? That's when things are going to start boiling, getting getting ready to do that again. Fire that old up. So now's the time, really. Uh, when did you say it was going to be? I don't know, like a month or so? Soon. Yeah, yeah, last uh, last week of August. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, and until then, of course, you can look forward to TV tuners every week. Uh, until next week, for more TV goodness, keep watching. Bye. It's over. Found him. Uh, hey, folks. It's time for the TV Tuners Fact of the Week. Uh, did you know that Stairmaster owns his own beach resort where he conducts, uh, shall we say, experiments? The beach does not make it.